my kids' well-being. What would they be like if something happened to me? You know, just because I wanted to make a thousand dollars to get up on this roof and check it out. You know, like how would it change not just the money, but how would it change everybody and for generations? You know, if, if I'm gone, then what? How would it change their generations and, and the generations after them, just by losing me? You know. Yeah. So it really put it in check. You know, and I'm not trying to like shake everybody up or anything, but. It's just one of those things like unless something like that happens or you see a car accident in front of you or somebody gets hit and then it's just like reality check, like money doesn't matter. Success doesn't matter. It's all health and well-being and love. And and you kind of lose track of that as we all do as we're out there hustling, you know, trying to make money. Welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, Podcast, where we give motivational and inspirational tips about life, small business, wisdom. Health, wealth, finance, relationships. relationships. It's about being the best, best you that you can possibly be. Possibly be, 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 be. Hashtag untrapped. Welcome, well, welcome to the Untrapped Podcast. 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 I am your host, Keith Kelfus. What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfus with the Untrapped Podcast, and on today's show, we've got Eric Rufolution Reno. Yeah, in the buddy. House. What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> Dude, I've known Eric since we were 15 years old, and I've watched Eric and I. Real quick, your story. He, I mean, literally came from a trailer park. We came from a trailer park, and today he's doing five million in his business. He's got like 65 people working for him. He does real estate, and most importantly, he's a husband and a father with like four kids. You got a lot of stuff going on, man. You got a lot of value to give. You got a YouTube channel that's getting tons of views. And, bro, how? Yeah. And, and you're finally here, man. So, what's going on, Eric? <laughs> what's up, man? How you doing? Dude, I, I, right before we fired up the cameras, you said you're putting in your first seven-figure offer on a real estate deal. Yes. And even though we're going to talk a lot about, you know, actual business stuff, yeah, talk about that. It's just cool, man, because, I mean, I have a lot of different real estate uh, deals and I have some that are very close to seven figures, but this one's over. So it's quite an accomplishment, man. You know, like when you're, when you're just beginning and you're counting hundreds, you're like, man, what is it like to count thousands? And then you're counting thousands. And it's like, man, if I had 10 grand in the bank, if I could just save 10 grand and it seems like it's way out there and then you get it. And then it's like, if I could have a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and then, and then you get it and then it's like a million. So now like it's my first million dollar deal and it's all by myself, no partners. It's just, it's just me. So it's, it's, it's like that next level. I've, I've, I've got a lot of stuff and I have um, a lot of different houses an apartment building, commercial property, storefronts, office suites. Um, but, you know, and it's I get it and it's, you know, it's cool and we close and then I'm like, yeah, that, that's cool. And the last one I didn't even, you know, usually as soon as I close, I'll, I'll go to the building and I'll be like, this is sweet. It's mine. You know, I drive around, take pictures. I didn't even go. I just signed the closing papers, went back to work and like eh, threw the keys in my office and that was it. So this one I'm pretty excited about. And can you talk about specifically what is it? It's a mini storage. That's dope, dude. Yes. And I have some pretty cool, unique ideas of how to drive it. But sweet. I'll, I'll keep those in for now. <laughs> so that's what people say. They want to build their their small business and then eventually invest in. Yeah, real estate and, you know, other companies. You know, I, I invested in my brother's uh, welding and fabrication company. So we do welding and, and building for uh, Boeing airplanes, uh, automotive parts. You know, we got this big ass uh, uh, facility, overhead cranes, all this crazy stuff. So it's nice, man. But I'm always like, how do I get to the next level? How do I count? 50 million, 100 million, you know, why is it only 1 million? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I remember one time you said uh, you like all the pressure right here. It's the only way I work, man. So talk a little bit about that. Because I, I, mean, I can run hard for like probably uh, 90 days straight, but just the type of the personality I am, I kind of have like a breakdown and I have to just separate myself and take a break. I get overwhelmed and yeah. then I can go hard again. But to, in order to have the amount of responsibilities you have and be a family man, I mean, it's nonstop. How do you recuperate or how do you perceive that to make all this I think this it work? goes all the way back to, well, like first it's just like genetics, but like even in school in fifth grade, you know, I had, a, I had this huge project to do. It was a whole planetarium where I had to put dinosaurs in this shoe box and decorate it. And you had like four weeks to do it, right? This thing had to be sweet. And it was like the night before I had nothing, you know, and I put this whole thing together. It was badass, man. You know, 
<laughs> so that's just how, like until I'm on the crunch, then it's just, that's just how I operate at best, you know? Bro, you, uh, you spoke, you were one of the presenters at the marketing ROI live workshop with, uh, in September. Yes, sir. And, uh, when you came on stage and spoke now, you don't speak on stage a lot, <sighs> dude, there's a couple of people there in the audience, grown men that were crying with like that, just like silverback gorilla, like, yeah. I'm going to get it, bro. Yeah. And I remember the last thing you said when you got off stage, you were like, if you come into my city or my town and you put signs up for roofing competition, that's OK. I'll effing crush you. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Yeah. But the way you said it, dude, gave everybody goosebumps because you've been able to to access that that silver back, that offensive like I'll fight for it. And, and I remember you said you went to, I'm not trying to hog up the podcast. I'm just trying to guide it. You, no, you said sure. you went to the Tony Robbins thing and that changed your life and the firewalk. So give us the 40,000 foot view on all that, your mindset, bro. It's just like, it's my livelihood. Paramount is my baby. I created, it. it's just like a child. I mean, it's literally my baby. I'll protect it. I'll feed it. I'll nurture it. I love it. Um, I, I, I do everything I do for my kids for, for Paramount. So it's like, if you put it in jeopardy or give me any negative feedback or, um, you know, anything, it's just like, you know, it's, it's like stabbing my kid, you know? So it's like, you come in my spot and you try to, you know, manipulate or crush anything I've done, then I'm going to forcefully fight as with anybody, you know, you get me in the corner and, but that's what I meant by it. It was just, you know, I encourage everybody to start their companies wherever they're at and, and push and, and, and succeed because that's what we should all do. We all have the opportunity to get anything that we want. You know, it's like you need to get what you deserve and you're only going to get what you deserve. So you need to push and push and push. And that's kind of what I meant by, you know, kind of what I meant by that. Mm hmm. OK, I want to talk, uh, ask you about the kind of the infrastructure of business. One thing that uh, separates you that I've learned from hanging out with you a lot is you talk about kind of average ticket price. So I say in my landscaping window cleaning business, our average ticket, it fluctuates from 860 to 1150. It's about a thousand bucks. Right. So on a 28, 30 percent profit margin, 300 bucks for every thousand. You told me once. You said, uh, Keith, I make the same amount of profit you do. It's just bigger numbers. So your average ticket job is? Um, I would say between fifteen and 25000 give or take. Yeah, so you only have 24 hours in a day, but you're going out and selling and closing and con getting contracts for fifteen and $25,000 jobs. Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. Sa same, exact, same exact scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So in a day, how much can you do in a day? So if we can do $25,000 revenue per crew per day, per working day, and then you multiply that, then you have multiple crews, multiple $25,000 jobs a day, and then that's how it can So you, you guys are doing 5 million? Like what is that, 165,000 a week or something? <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, on, we'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll top that on some summer weeks for sure. But then in the winter, you know, this is in Michigan, it's a 10 month deal, you know, maybe it's nine and a half months. So, uh, long days in the summer, we can work 7am and they'll work till 9pm, you know, willingly. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody wants their overtime and all that stuff. So, uh, now, um, we did a project together recently and I've come to your office plenty of times. He's got a nice office in a downtown area. He's got like a, like a, like a receptionist answering the phones. Then he's got a secretary and, a, and a, an office manager and an accountant in your office. Right. And, and I noticed that you know how to see like the fruit and then assign other people to delegate and they run. It's almost like you're like a conductor. Right. And they're doing all the work. So how do you perceive that? And then also make sure there's enough money to pay for that infrastructure so the bottom doesn't fall out. Do you, right. know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's very important. Yeah, I've been very good, um, almost great at keeping my overhead costs as low as possible while maintaining um, a large, well, it's still a small business, but a larger size small business. Um, so I've been very good at, at, making sure all the systems in there are in the place and the people are in the place to do them and not money going out the window for a project manager that I don't need to just oversee projects. But it also comes from me being just a superhuman animal that just wants to do 
eight appointments a day. Cause if I didn't do eight appointments a day and I was lazy or I wanted to sit home and play video games and collect money, why my guys work, then it would be a totally different scenario. How many you know? positive five star reviews do you have? Five, 600 or something. 600 or something. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So talk a little bit about that now, how you market and advertise your business to get all the leads coming in, who closes the leads and creates a quote so you can go out and do the quotes. And then once you get it locked in, how do you assign it and then have crews do it? So it all gets done in the old material so you can yeah. collect money. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it's me, man. Um, I love it though. I, I, you know, I always tell people when they, when they ask me stuff like this, like, and this is going a little bit farther, but do what you like to do. You know, when you open your business, whether it's landscaping, roofing or whatever, whatever you're doing, whatever you like to do, make sure you're doing that part of your business and then delegate everything else out. My passion is to meet every customer and to sell, um, not, not just sell, but to educate and, and meet them and shake their hand and say, this is paramount. This is my baby. You can contact me. You can text me on my personal phone anytime you want. Um, you have my word. So it, it's, it, that's what I do. So that's what, that's how I've been able to collect the reviews and I'll meet every single person. I inspect every single job when my guys are done. I, I'm the one that orders all the material. I'm the one that does the sales. I'm the one that goes and does the inspections, shakes their hand, collects the check. You know, I, I do all that. Um, I, I have two other guys that do it as well, but I do it every single day and I do it more than anyone else does. Back in 2004, uh, I came and I roofed with you when you worked for a company <laughs> for like uh, two weeks or something. Right. <sighs> At the end of the second week, it was the middle of a hot July day. It was about 104. <laughs> My feet on the roof felt like the 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 skin. Yeah. And I, I worked out all the time. I did landscaping. I'm I'm. I'm a worker, dude. Right. Oh, yeah. I felt like the, the flesh was ripping off of my feet and my feet were physically bleeding. My shoulders were bleeding from carrying shingles up the roof. <laughs> my hands were bleeding and I was so exhausted. I was shaking like this and I kept pushing myself because I felt like I'm like, how are all these guys doing this? Yeah. And I and, and I thought the same thing when I first started too, man. That same thing. Dude, I remember we did this uh, job in Gross Point, and it was like a rainy morning. It was a steep, two and a half story house. Like, you, I mean, it was scary, right? And the guys were sitting on the ground, like, "How are we even gonna get up there to start taking the shingles off to even?" And then you went up to the top of this ladder. Eric went up to the top of this ladder. He he jumped. Well, he had a tool in his hand, and he grabbed the pitch, the top of the roof, and hung like a monkey, and then took the tool and started ripping the shingles off. And then created a place for his hand. And then you went up and then you created another place for your other hand. And then you went up and you stuck his foot on the roof, bro. And then literally created a place and just started going and taking the shingles off. And then everybody was like, okay. And everybody followed you. Yeah. It was, it was like there were, there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it's probably not always the smartest thing to do, but you know. well, that was a long, long time ago. Sure. And I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to just back you up and say that the times I've gone on roofs with Eric and I'm way up there, just come to meet you for a quote or do some, some Instagram or something. I've said to myself, like, if a man can go through all that and bleed every day for his family. And then on top of that, start your own roofing business on the weekends. Like you dude, you're not afraid. You will literally get up and start carrying shingles and run circles around anybody any second. Always. Yeah, yesterday we did one. I was up there. We had to take the back side of the roof off. It's all old one by six. We had to take it all off because it had mold on it and we had to play sheeting in. I was up there eight in the morning. I was like, all right, guys, let's go. So we got up there. The guys started tearing off. I got up there, started uh, unloading the wood, you know, ripping the wood off the roof, putting the new sheets in place, putting all the hurricane clips in, putting the baffles in. And they're like, man, why, why are you here? It's like 30 degrees. It's like, dude, I have to work, man. I can't sit in my house. I can't. I can only sit in the office for so long, man. You know, I have to I have to work. Plus, it's cool when you show up to your with your guys and you're, you're geared up, they're geared up and you're like, let's go, man. Side by side. We're a team. Let's let's go. You know, I can do this too. I, I don't have to, you know, sit and just instruct people. I can jump up and help you, you know? So it's like, I got to work side by side with these guys and, you know, it's a little bit of mutual respect. I respect what you guys do. You respect what I do and it helps your company, you know, throughout if you're able to do that. You know, I think, I think it's very important to show up and swing a hammer with them once in a while, especially if you know what you're doing, you know?
Did you go through uh, a time where you were undercharging and you had to learn pricing and how to distinguish and separate yourself and invest when, money into the image of your business? Talk about all that. When you start, man, and, and this is probably one of the most top three most questions that come to my DM or my YouTube is how do I start? What do I do for marketing? How, how, what's the cheapest way to get leads? And should I do flyers, Angie's list, you know, home advisor, whatever. All of them, all of them and all of them, any of them. That's what I did. I signed up for Angie's List. I signed up for Home Advisor. I put out flyers. I knocked doors. I put it in the newspaper, Facebook, you know, as much stuff as I could afford to do, all of it, all of it, all of it. And then at the beginning, yeah, I would charge less than everybody else would do it. I, I had to. I had to create a reputation. I had to create reviews. So in the beginning, you can't go and charge what the big companies are. I don't care how good of a salesman you are. You can't just like. It's just not how it works, you know, so you got to build that reputation. Once you have 20, 30 reviews for undercharging, you know, that stuff stacks up and then it, it's, it becomes its own entity is snowballing. You know, it's like a snowball effect. So once you have 50 reviews and, you know, you, you've you done some jobs and people can call and you have references, then you charge a little bit more, charge a little bit more as your company can grow until you can really set yourself apart and say, this is my number. It's more than anyone else's. If you want somebody else, go for it. Nice. How much do you pay for marketing and advertising on average per month? And your what part of how much of your gross annual revenue? How much do you spend on marketing each year? To well, we just redid all this, so I'm I'm gonna make a YouTube video. I do every year the 18 one. Last year we probably spent I don't know maybe 150 grand, 175 thousand, something like that. But that would be apparel. That would be SEO, pay per click, Angie's List. I mean everything that has the Paramount logo on it. You know that that's what I think of as advertising. So this year would be a little bit more. It'd probably be like two twenty-five. So you're going. You, so you plan on spending. This is clear. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars this year on marketing your business. Yeah. So the question is, when all the leads come through, are you doing that to turn on so many more leads so you can skim the cream off the top to get the best ones, or have you already in your marketing advertise pre-qualified and positioned your company so people come to you willing, uh, ready to buy? Both. 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 Yeah, I want both. So you want that phone ringing off the hook? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I brought in two uh, guys last year, an insurance specialist, and then I have two guys that are ready to jump on to sales. And, you know, I, I don't like to hire people and bring people to my company. I like to build the people that have been there for me. I like to build them up and teach them. That's that's how I've done this whole entire thing. Some of the guys that shingle or are on the crew or my foremans are guys that I physically nailed next to, like my for 10 years. So it's like, I like to bring people up and help them and show them and build them. And if they want to go one day and open their own business, then that's, that's great. You know, I'm, I'm there to help them. I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help them. But yeah, I, I want to all, keep all three of us as busy as I am and just keep going, you know, just keep going. That's as much as I can maintain. <laughs> that's what, that's what the goal is. So just a so, little bit more. There's this one thing. You didn't say this, but one time somebody tell, told you, put the turd on another man's plate. Yeah. And that's just kind of a funny saying. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that's gotten? That's, dude, that's the key to business and life, man. That is the key to it all is you find something you don't want to do. Then you have to find somebody that will do it for you, you know, and it's not a negative way. It's not putting people down. It's like, hey, you know, I need um, for this job, I'm going to need a one by six that's a treated wood rough saw and it's like they don't sell that at the distributor so it's like am i going to go get that or am i going to tell somebody else to pick it up on the way we so, put that a little bit closer sure so am i going to am i going to go get that or am i going to yeah. tell somebody to go get it on the way you know so it's it's just it's delegating and learning to delegate you know properly okay. so this is the thing that might be burning this question it's, some people will say but how in the hell am I going to delegate to all these people if there's not enough money coming in or enough profit or margin per job to even afford to? So they're stuck in this catch-22 kind of rat race in their business. I mean, I, my, my answer is always the same to this, and I don't know how good of an answer it is, but in any industry... If you Google any industry, whether it's popcorn, jelly beans, landscaping, there's somebody that's dominating the market. There's somebody that's getting rich off everything and they've figured it out. So you need to see what they've done, model that, twist it in your own way and, and duplicate it or, or replicate it in some way. 
everybody's somebody's out there getting a piece of the pie. Why aren't you? Why yeah. why why aren't you? If there's somebody doing a certain service that anybody and I'm I'm genuinely asking for the audience, anybody who is a chuck in a truck can go do that thing. So now they're competing on price and they're constantly getting beat up. They're but, there's, like, but there's a reason. You have to understand you have to you have to dissect and, and figure you have to sit down and person. What, what if a guy's angry? Personality check. It. What what what's the difference in your psychological focus and the big guy that's dominating the market? What, what, yeah. Where besides experience and time and marketing budget, where I'm saying like you know focus. Where's the focus here and where's the focus here? Mm. Why why are why are we less? Because you know there's people getting rich off. I mean, here I'll just call it. If a guy cuts lawns, okay. Mm-hmm. Now there are guys. I had Brian's lawn care on here. Uh, Hey, Brian's Let's, a man. Shout out. Dude, he's, <laughs> dude, he's crushing. He's very smart yeah. about his lawn care business. So what if a guy has a lawn care business specifically because a lot of you guys do lawn care and landscaping? I'm from, very familiar with that. And you might have an excuse and say, but it feels very real. Well, I can't tell my customer it's going to be $60 to cut their lawn when there's 10 other guys that will do it for 25 And now, so why, why in the hell would the customer pay me even $50 just to cut their lawn? Can you? Yeah, is there and an then you that? can buy two lawnmowers and have two people cut them and do them both for thirty, and then you still made fifty dollars in the same amount of time. So, I mean, it's it, it's you can't just throw prices at no. I I don't do that. I don't think anybody does that. Yeah, yeah. You know, just throws prices out there. You know, and just hopes that it, there's a reason in in a, in a objective. You know, I think with some of the different businesses, um, like my business is essential. If I if I cut your grass, say you hire me to cut your grass. I, I don't even cut my own grass. I have somebody else cut it. But mm-hmm. I, I need 30 bucks. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to cut your grass. I'm going to do a terrible job and I know it. So if I do the worst grass cutting job, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You know, the grass is going to grow back and somebody else is going to come and recut my grass. If I give you a roof. And I just started. If you gave me a roof, you know, mm-hmm. you were going to, you sold me a roof. You and your landscape guys put my roof on. What is the, you know, what could happen if I get a bad roof? It, it could be catastrophic. So that's the difference between, you know, in a customer mindset of price shopping versus quality shopping. I think that has something to do with it. But it doesn't mean that there's not, you know, there's companies by me that have 50 trucks that cut grass. Absolutely. So they're dominating the space. So what can you see if you were to look, because you're a very entrepreneur person, look at a, just specifically a lawn care company and say um, just what you can think. What what are some guys, can, what are things that guys could do to, to raise their profit, raise their margins, expand and get the guy, say, out of the field where he's he's more so managing the company, he's, get him off the lawn more, get him making more money and well, I think that business has to be driven by vol- volume, right? I mean, it's got to be a vol- it's it's a volume based business. You can't cut four grass a day or four lawns a day for you know the same amount unless you're doing unless you have a special edge or a, 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 something special that you do better than anybody else. Mm. I know I, I see on like Brian's Instagram sometimes there's grass that is cut looks like a checkerboard. It's beautiful. So if you have a couple guys like that, you know, a couple pictures like that, and then you have really picky clients, I mean, you can charge a little bit more if the grass is going to come out like that every time. But just starting out, I think it's more of a volume based business where you have to have a couple guys, you know, I mean, labor's relatively cheap, right? So you have to find an edge where you can have good quality, but have way more volume. Volume game is the game. I I mean, not me being in that business, it seems like that's, I mean, how long does it take to cut a uh, if you have a lawn that is, what's the average lawn for? I pay $35 for my lawn. Uh, it depends on the size of the property, but let's say 28 bucks. Okay. So we'll just say 30 bucks. So how long does it take to cut a $30 lawn? Um, You could do it. And if you have riders, you could be in and out in 12 minutes in the summer. If it's long, it could take you 20 minutes to be in and out by the time you pull up to by the time you drop off. Some of you might disagree with that. Let me know in the comments below. I mean, we've did lawns before and literally we've been in and out in seven minutes. Okay. So we'll just say 15 minutes. You made $30, $30 in 15 minutes. Um, you, you have a guy, what's the average lawn uh, labor guy cost? 15, uh, 15, 15 an bucks an hour. Okay. So we paid him what? Seven bucks. Yep. We paid him seven bucks. We got gas and in different travel time, call it three dollars. Is that is that accurate? I don't know. Sure. Okay, so we made twenty dollars profit in twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Yeah. So 
I, I didn't do the math, but what popped up in my head was route density. So if you have an entire subdivision lockdown where you're literally going long, 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 no drive time, boom, 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 domination, then you can actually make a lot of money doing lawn care. So there it is. So what you would do then is if that's where the money's at and you only have one crew and two, you know, or if you only, it's you and one other guy, then you have to, you know, use Facebook because you can really do demographic reaches where it's like, I only want this city and I only want this clientele, right? You can do a Facebook ad. They're they're rel- relatively cheap, mm. and then you you can try to dominate you know one space, one not maybe not one neighborhood, but one space to where you can just go through, and it seems like that would be cash flow positive. Yeah, like I wouldn't even go outside of our city now. It has to be at least a couple grand because I, I I'm not going over there anymore. Right. So for sure, because you'll drive all the way out three four cities oh. away to do roofs or more. Oh, yeah. Hour if and a half, two hours, if it's right. You know, if the money is there, right? Yeah. That's interesting. Now, what about, um, <laughs> it's awesome. Just a nice, nice. Silent. Yeah. See, the cool thing about this is it's like, before we do this, me and Keith don't talk about anything that we're going to talk about. I was like, Keith, what are we going to talk about? He's like, I don't know. I'm just going to ask you questions. I was like, Oh, all right, cool. So this, like everything that we say is not like, um, not written down. There's no numbers in front of me or paper. So when we're rattling off numbers and, and trying to do math, it's like, <laughs> you know, if something's wrong or, or off, that's why that yeah. nothing's rehearsed. It's all original and authentic. Bro, I'm going to come up with that. Uh, I like the Lewis house podcast. He has very, very specific questions. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come out with six very specific questions. Like, here you go. If you could, and I'm just making this up. <laughs> if you can go back 10 years, what would you have done differently? Oh man, <laughs> there's so much, man. I would have just started, you know, it's like, and I'm sure almost every person that's watching this is in this place where you've either just started, you're thinking about starting or you have your business. And every single one of us that have a business or just started wishes we started 10 years ago. So that that would be it. You know, I talked about opening my own company when I was running other people's companies for years. And it's like, man, if I would have just had five more years, I mean, 10 years, I would have been probably too young, but five years, if I would have just had five years earlier, you know, where would, where would we be now? But it all comes in time. Dude, I remember when you started your business and you just went out and you bought that dope ass Cadillac. Yeah. What was that again? (laughs) Uh, Eight. Yeah. ATS. Yeah. Dude, like, you pulled up in that bitch. It was all black with black windows and black leather. Yeah, that was cool. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was before it even the car even came out. So I think it was a 2012 and it was 2011. Something like that. that was dope. So what, where do you want to be in 10 years? Because you, your birthday is like tomorrow or so? Uh, yeah. You'll be Sunday, how old? 20, uh, 34. That's, That's awesome. crazy, man. <laughs> where are you going to be when you're 44? Where do you want to be and how, how do you plan on getting there? Everything that I do is, is long-term, you know, that's why I buy the real estate. I hold it all. I've only flipped one house. I've only, that was the only house I've ever gotten rid of. And I just didn't like the clientele that, you know, when I put it up for rent. Um, so everything's a long-term play for me. All my, as far as my mortgage goes and all my deals, as far as, you know, real estate is all 10 year loans. So by the time I'm 43, I should owe nothing. I mean, I'm going to keep buying shit. So of course I'm going to owe stuff, but everything that I have now, I'm going to own nothing and I'm going to have millions worth of real estate and dirt and paramount. And so I I don't know, man, my goal is just to run a fishing boat. Like I want to do a charter boat in like uh, the Bahamas and just wake up somewhere every day with palm trees and take people fishing like executives. Now I'm talking, not talking a little dinghy boat. I'm talking like a big ass boat. We're going to take business executives out, treat them to, you know, and just bullshit and network and uh, keep building, you know, but I don't know. I like to speak and I like to, I don't know, man. Okay. You got <laughs> four kids. Yes, sir. How old is your youngest? She is one. She's like 14 months. Talk about that. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. I mean, why? Man, it's just, you know, it's a, it's an amazing thing to uh, go home and walk in the door and you're stressed out. And you had a long day, you know, and you're, you're sweating or wherever, whatever you're doing. And as soon as you open the door, all the kids are like, daddy, and they run up and they hug you, you know, and it's like, no matter what happens outside, they're always there, you know, and they're always there for you as long. I mean, as long as you give to them, you know. But I, it's it's just amazing. It's amazing. All all of them are awesome. I remember uh, it was a couple of years ago. We just pulled up at your house in the afternoon. 
<clears throat> something. I don't know. Maybe I was giving you a quote or something. And all of a sudden, your wife and kids all ran out of the door and ran in the driveway, and you were hugging and kissing them all. And I just sat in my truck. I was like, <laughs> 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 like I don't know. It was like emotional to wit because I, yeah. I know you as my friend, right? And it was amazing to see. Wow, you're you're your dad. You're a good dad. Yeah. You just took your whole family to Disney World for a week. Yeah. Yeah. Talk awesome. about that. It was just amazing. I mean, how, yeah, how much better does it get? You know, we live in Michigan. It's cold as hell. It's, you know, snowy and it's off season. I work a lot um, in the summertime. So it's the only, it's only right. So yeah, we, we all went to Disney in Florida and hung out for a while. What's the time. vision that drives you to think big and do big things? It's, it's just the process. I love the process. I love the growth. I love the, um, I just like the fight. I love the hustle. That's, that's just what drives me. I love that. I love that. Am I, am I, uh, cats giving you the sniffles? Yeah. That's why I'm like, <laughs> trying not to be like breathe to where this thing can hear. So me. you love the process. I like the process. I like the fight. You know, I like the hustle. I like to get up every day. And what is it today? What am I getting today? Like, what, what, what are we doing? What are we accomplishing? And it doesn't always have to be like money or business driven. It's, you know, today I'm accomplishing time with one of the kids, you know, we're, we're going to Dave and Buster's, you know, that that's what my process today is, or my goal today is to make sure that that time is the most effective time that I could possibly spend with her. Um, whatever it is, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's important to keep that together. <clears throat> All right, man. Talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. You fired up your <laughs> cell phone and started making videos and you've only done like 50 videos and you've already got like 8,000 subscribers or some shit. Um, yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's like, I love it so much. I love to connect with people. I love the feedback and people will, you know, not every time. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of times that I, I don't, but people will message me on Facebook or Instagram or just write a comment and I'll, I'll try to like answer it, you know? Um, it, it's constant. So I, I do the best I can, but, um, it's just cool to interact and help people. And I've, I've, I have a couple friends from Instagram or Facebook or YouTube that, you know, we, we talk all the time, you know, guys that awesome? businesses and you know doing stuff and this one guy called me he's uh he had a uh a facebook post for uh forecasting weather and he just moved it to patreon because i told him i was like dude you gotta just you know get your stuff together and i sent him one of the videos it's called uh shape your destiny or quit your job and shape your destiny. that was a great video dude that he made so you might want to check that out yeah. i'll put a link in the description below to this video eric made dude it'll make you cry <clears throat> i just had the it's rocky type shit and we weren't even talking about you know growth or anything we I just like felt like when we hung up, I had to send him that, you know, and I did. And then months later, he, or I don't even think it was a month later, he took his thing from Facebook, put it onto Patreon and now has like 10,000 Patreons that pay him $2 a month or whatever it is, you know, to, I, I don't know how it works. I don't want to put too much of his business out Mama there. Good pay. But yeah. You know, and he's like, thank you so much. He's like, all I needed was just that kick in the ass, you know? And it's like, I, I hear it consistently and, and that's what it's all about but as far as my youtube you know i, I do it when i feel it you know I, I don't it's not a job to me I, I don't do it three times a week um i i take a lot more videos than i ever post um but it's something i want to do but i don't know where i'm at with it you know so you being an influencer in the industry now <laughs> What, what, uh, who are some influencers, so to speak, or entrepreneurs that you love? Like, I know you love Shark Tank and I was like, but who, yeah. who do you, what are some books that you're reading? You, I know you listen to audio books on audible.com. Who? Um, Gary V. Like I'm on a Gary V. power trip right now, man. You know how you get like attached to one person and you just listen to all their shit, you know? So I'm just, uh, like Gary V. I love Damon John. I love the authentic, you know, authenticity of Damon John. Um, Grant. And, you know, Tony, I mean, there's just so many of them, you know, um, but you got to find who, who works for you. You know, who's got that mentality that, that matches what you have. Guys, if you want to meet Eric Reno in person, you want to shake his hand, you want to talk business with him, come to the 2019 marketing ROI live workshop. This one is going to be epic. And Eric's going to be speaking and presenting on stage, talking about business, the grind, the hustle. What are you going to talk hustle, about? The hustle, dude. The hustle. I want to be, because, you know, like, my my take in this, uh, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, because I'm, I'm this is new for me. This is a beginning thing for me. But 
last time, all these people come on the stage and they have all this great information and great energy. And they're just talking about, you know, everybody has their niche of what they're talking about. And it's like, I just want to be the guy that's the savage hustler that just brings everybody like, fuck, let's go. You know, like that's, that's what I, that's what I do. So it's not about like marketing and sales funnels and, and, um, you know, like all this other stuff, like that's all part of your business and it's super important. But to me, it's like that inner lion, that fire, that, that drive, that hustle. That's what business, that's what built my business. So Dude, you, you were talking about this thing and I don't know if we're going to do it because in the future I'm going to have a, it's called the alpha project. It's where a group of men to get together. We le- we come in and we just destroy any leftover boy that's inside or victim and we leave men. But we we're talking about that, but possibly at the ROI, you, you had this vision. Tell the vision about this. Well, it's not, I don't, I don't really have it together yet. You're so, so. well composed, man. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I just, you know, keep it inside until, cause if I, if I rehearse things or, or I go through things and they're, I, I just feel they're not authentic anymore. Yeah. So that's why I like, uh, you know, I'm trying to build the roof solution sales, you know, and people are hitting me up constantly and it's like, if I have to rehearse it or write it down, then I just feel like it's not authentic. So I have to do this. I do the same videos over and over and over and over and over, trying to get it to be perfect and it's not perfect. So it, I don't know. It's a struggle for me, man. I like to be authentic. It's as real as it gets. That's it. That's all there is. <clears throat> you know what I'm going to do? I found out this uh, trick. I could actually plug my phone into the mixer and take live phone calls. And then we can conversate with people and, and bring your questions in. So I might be I might be doing that in the future here. That's what we have to do. That's what I've been trying to tell this guy. That's what we have to do. What? We have to schedule a time, right? And it doesn't, you know, me or whoever. Um, but if you did it like, you know, say Tuesdays at 7 p.m., you know, every week it's a live thing. People can call us, you know, like at the Gary Vee show. People can call us or they can they can write on and we can talk to them in real time. And then people can see and hear, you know, cause you know, me and you come up with good questions and we bounce off each other. Well, but somebody else might throw, you know, something else yeah, or even dude. some like criticism, you know, let, like, let, let's hear it. What do you got? Dude. That's what I think we should do, dog. I love it. <laughs> very, very smart. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'd be a nightmare. Who knows? No, maybe it'll be good. Sure. It will. Okay, so anything else that's on your mind about business before we wrap this up? No, it's uh, we're getting into spring. What's oh, your plans please. for spring? What are you going to do? When do you start marketing and advertising before the actual? Like right now, like this, like we went through everything this week. Next week, we'll start rolling everything out. Spring flyers, I try to catch it right, be- like right, I'm, I try to be real tricky with it. Like right between when the weather gets better and people collect tax money. Yeah, so what do you mean flyers? You mean postcards? Postcards, yeah. How are you going to do that? Um, we do like EDD. What is it? EDDM. Yeah. So um, I get a postcard made. I put it in the zip codes around me, put on some cool shit, and we send them to everybody. How do you know? they? Do they all get delivered or how does that work? Yeah, they all get delivered. Um, the, the ROI on them is very good. It's been very good every year. So do you just send one round of them or multiple rounds? How, how much do you spend on EDDM? Um, it's definitely expensive. It's um, more than... Pff, Fifteen twenty thousand dollars. I mean, it's, but we're sending out tons of these things, you know. Yeah. So, do you um, do you like have a separate bank account specifically for marketing, or is it just come out of the business account? How do you set that aside or think about that? Um, I I don't. It comes out of the business account and the bookkeeper and the accountant tell it where it goes. I don't know. So, how do you know how much to spend on it that works for you? I don't, I don't pre-budget, man. I, I just try to crush the market. You know, I don't, you know, people are like, oh, you got to spend 10% of your yearly income in this and 20% goes to like having fun with the guys. You know, it's, it's I just put it where it's needed when it's needed. You know, if, if we're, if we're killing it, you know, and our backlog's just crazy, then I'm not going to boost marketing. I'm not going to do it just to do it. I'm not going to just print t-shirts to print t-shirts, but I will, you know, I will, if I see an opportunity, I will. Okay, so you got SEO, pay per click, which is Google AdWords. You got your website. His website's the shit. Like, I like it, dude. It's everything. You look at like this is official. You got social. Are you doing social media marketing? Yeah, or? we're doing some social media marketing. It needs to get better. So Keith is going to do my social media marketing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> hey, man, if the check's clear, I'm doing it. All right. <laughs>
All right. So, um, and that's one thing that we're doing, uh, a social media marketing agency. I've been really enlightened to a lot of stuff. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really good at all that stuff. So we're taking on clients and high profile clients doing that in the business. So contact me at Kelfus media at gmail.com for now, if you are interested in that. So it's just interesting. Your whole perceptive perception now, do you have a floor in the business? Like I'm no longer doing this type of work or this low end stuff. Do you, what is, do you have a foot in the door? As in like, say you'll, you'll do a repair in order to get to the next thing, or like uh, you do gutter cleaning in order to get, give them a free roof quote when you're there. Do you mess with any of that stuff? Yeah. I mean, that's all part of the repair process. You know, you never know who you're going to run into or what, what you're going to end up doing. So you're, you're saying like, if somebody calls and say, Hey, I just need a downspout replaced. Am I going to come out to do it? Is that what you're asking me? Stuff like that in order so you can get the foot on the property, meet them, and then give them a roof quote. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, sure. so if somebody says they want a roof quote, do you give them a quote for siding, gutters, and insulation as well? Whatever they want. No. But you uh, give it to them anyways just to say, hey, I noticed your siding's a little oh, off in case you want it. I'll, I'll always bring it up, but I'm not a forceful person. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna educate you. I'm going to show you all the options. I'm going to show you um, all the products, let you touch, feel them. Um, I'm going to give you addresses, references, always. And then... It, I'll just leave the book, you know, and talk then, about the, uh, at the private workshop that we did, um, there's only like 14 guys there and you were talking about how you give customers gift baskets and stuff. Always talk about that day. Yo. So check it out. <laughs> so this hit me, I went to the seminar, right. And we're going through all this stuff and a lot of it's, you know, repetitive when you're going through, you know, long seminars or whatever. Um, and he said, you know, I just want to ask you guys all a question. You go to a job, you do a roof, the average ticket's $15,000. You go there, you collect a check, you say thank you, you shake their hand. And it's like, that's it. That's it. You know, he's like, well, how, how, do you guys actually say thank you? Or do you just say thank you and shake their hand? He's like, do you tell your customers, thank you, I appreciate you? And it really hit me. Like, I thought about it. I was like, damn, you know, like, what am I going to do? So um, from then on, we always send everybody gift baskets that we do their roof. How much are the gift, ba gift bas baskets and they're, where do you get them from? Uh, it, multiple different places. I'm still trying to find the perfect one. Um, we get some cool ones. Some are like, um, like, you know, different foods and, and baking goods or, you know, if I know they're into something, they're, they're wine people, I'll send them some wine or whatever, just depending on what I feel. I'll, I'll always write it down. Like, you know, uh, you know, they'd like cooking or whatever. So I'll send them some spices and some, you know, whatever. Um, but usually around 80 bucks, 85 bucks, you know, so we spend about $850 a week, uh, gifts. Is that a write-off? Yes, sir. So you... Well, ask your accountant. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to give any legal advice. <laughs> $80 gift baskets you send to every single individual customer you do a roof for. Yeah. I mean, if you made $4,000 off them, you can't give them $80. Yes. And then they leave you a positive review. That's the hope. Yeah. So uh, one other final thing is that you're not just only doing just roofs. You are doing insurance work and a lot of it. You've really. Yeah, that is the next level. You know, uh, this year we've added on exterior painting. I have a really awesome uh, guy, good friend for a long time um, that, that is looking to expand into that. And I'm happy to deliver it for him. So we're going to do some exterior painting and um, the insurance work as far now we only do outdoor um, but I'll coordinate anything. If hail comes through, it damages garage doors, it hits AC unit condensers, um, windows, anything anything on the outside, I'll, I'll fix. Driveways, concrete, whatever it is. Um, so now we're, now we're messing with the inside where we have drywall guys, painters, interior, exterior. I have a mason. Um, and then it would be to mitigation. So water, fire, you know, stuff like that would Doubt. be the goal. <laughs> so... <clears throat> just like every early spring, we're going to have some rushing winds that are going to be blowing through here. My what happens? Favorite. <laughs> Tell me. Hey, man, you know, it's all claimable. So your phone rings off the hook. Oh, yeah. And we're all manage. I mean, as soon as we as soon as I get a notification, we're going to have six because usually at 60 miles per hour. That's that sweet spot where shingles will blow off a house. As soon as I have that, it's all hands on deck. We cancel all appointments, all roofs, everything that we're doing, and we're all knocking doors. Every single one of us has flyers already on deck. We're knocking doors. If it's an isolated storm, I have flyers that are sitting at the post office waiting for me to say, hey, send them to this zip, go to this neighborhood, and they'll be there the next day. So insurance work is very competitive because it pays well and everybody's all over it. So you you know the goal is to get there before anybody else does. 
So we have all these things in place. So as soon as we get the notifications, it's like, okay, it's go time. Cancel everything. We're all, I'm knocking doors. I'm putting tarps on roofs. All my guys are doing the same thing as me. So that's another thing is like, I'm not afraid to, to get up there and do it. Bro, I got to send you this link. Uh, Joshua Latimer did this podcast with this dude who does door knocking. He did like $30 million in sales, knocking doors. And how the hell did you do in that? What? 30 million in what? Uh, the service business, dude. I think it's it's got to be yeah. is a lot, dude. Yeah. So what he the, the the team what they taught them how to do is specifically is when you show up to the customer's door, you talk to them like you act like you're really busy, and they open the door because you look like you're busy, right? You're not like trying to sell them. And as soon as they open the door, you say, "Hey, uh, just letting you know, are you aware of what's going on in the neighborhood right now? Uh, we're here. We're doing the whole neighborhood." And we're actually uh, we're here to give you a price for X, Y, and Z, and um, uh, you're going to get a discount today because we're already in the neighborhood. The like so the the you're framing it so the customer thinks, oh, I'm not aware this is this thing is happening. Well, that means they're part of it and they want to get in on it. So I'm going to walk around and I'm going to give you a quote and then come back and yeah. then uh you know this is your special. Pr- so I'll be right back in a minute and then you walk in the, and they're like, oh okay, and then you just does that make sense? Yeah, because. So if you, dude, I mean, this is a totally different scale, man. So it's like, <laughs> dude, a, a storm comes through. I show up at your house. I'm, I'm not on your door. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you know, guys, the customer, I, I'm really busy. It's like, dude, the whole left side of your roof just blew off. Do you want me to tarp this for you and take care of it? So you don't, don't leak tomorrow. I mean, there's no gimmicks. There's no, it's like your roof is off. Your shingles are on the ground. Do you want me to help you? I'm here right now. You know, it won't cost you anything. I'm going to bill your insurance company. Here's a contract. I need you to sign this now. I meet the adjuster. I coordinate all, everything that has to do with it. You get a free roof. Well, minus your, less your deductible. And we all walk away. So it's it's an entirely different animal. I don't have to act like anything or do anything. All I have to do is say, hey, did you see that your roof is on the ground? <laughs> 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 you know, we have rain on Tuesday. Today's uh, Sunday and your roof is over there. Do you do you want me to take care of that? So uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit different game, right? But when this happens, the whole, you know, city gets flooded by these, you know, all of us. So I got it. It's like you got to be ready to, uh, you know, assemble your team. So you're already ready and proactive, all prepared for this. Oh, yeah. Proactivity. We've learned. Okay. Last thing I want to talk about before we go. It was last year, the year before you called me up and you were really shaken and nervous because you could have fell off a roof like you almost did. Oh, yeah. Do you feel comfortable talking about that? Yeah. I was wondering what you were going to say. I was like, man, when did this you happen? Because <laughs> usually I'm pretty, I'm pretty like content. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a monster. We were about three stories up. We were working on like a seven, eight pitch, which is, you know, usually not bad. But when you're three stories up, it, it always seems a little bit steeper. So we had jack boards at the bottom. Um, if you don't know what a jack board is, if you have a roof pitch, they look like metal J's. You nail these to the roof and then the boards lay into the into them. So you have somewhere to step. And I was walking across it the, right at the bottom eave line. There was no gutters in the house because we were replacing them. And the jack just slid down like it slid out so i immediately fell grabbed the hip of the roof and pulled myself up while my feet were dangling over concrete you know and i like stood up and i was like what the fuck man you know and i walked down and i I just kind of like sat there and just like thought like you know you ever something ever happened and you wish you could just rewind time just a little bit and it's like that was one of those moments where it was like i almost didn't make it home like i almost didn't make it home so I was shook up, you know, I was, it happens. You, you get like when a car accident happens in front of you, you know, you're like, pff, you call your wife, you call your kids make sure everybody's okay. And you're just, cause you just seen this, you know? So it, it's like reality check. We're all humans. We're real. And it just, it just kind of like, it fucked with me for a second, you know? And then I got back up there eventually and, you know, did what I had to do, but. They put everything into perspective. Yeah. And just how dangerous what we do is and how much, you know, how much, how much risk we take every day with my life and, and my guys and my kids well-being. What would they be like if something happened to me? You know, just because I wanted to make a thousand dollars to get up on this roof and check it out. You know, like how would it change not just the money, but how would it change everybody and for generations? You know, if, if I'm gone, then what how would it change their generations and, and the generations after them just by losing me? You know, 
Yeah, dude. So I really put it in check, you know, and I'm not trying to like shake everybody up or anything, but it's just one of those things like unless something like that happens or you see a car accident in front of you or somebody gets hit and then it's just like reality check, like money doesn't matter. Success doesn't matter. It's all health and well-being and love. And and you kind of lose track of that as we all do as we're out there hustling, you know, trying to make money. But love it, bro. How can everybody find you? What's your Instagram handle? What's your YouTube? What's all that? Um, Eric underscore Reno, R E N O, uh, Instagram, YouTube is roof Evolution. Eric Reno. You can search it anyway. It's, it's all my name. So I don't have any like stage names yet or anything like that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Thank you so much. Yeah. My friend for sure, man. Long time, man. Love this guy. I mean, we've grown up together for, I mean, we've been together for a long time, hanging out together, whatever. So it's, I remember you having a party at your house in that trailer once. I came in, like, there's some <clears throat> alcohol on the table and it's a little bit smoky. And I brought a fucking <laughs> keyboard in and I started playing the keyboard in front of I don't know what. Uh, good times, man. Good times. <laughs> that, yeah, I think that's when we were getting into music. We started. Yeah, because that was the first, like, studio. We were in the laundry room and then we had some foam on the wall and we hung a mic by the law. Uh, so we had to make sure the laundry wasn't going on while we were recording. <laughs> and then we had uh, the, the mic strings would be all stapled to the ceiling all the way out to the living room where the computer was. Not like it was that far. Dude, but. and I remember when you moved into that two-bedroom apartment and you had that big walk-in closet. Yeah. And you, you turn it to a booth. Yeah, that was sweet. Oh. <laughs> that was cool. That was awesome. That what was, was the name cool. of that microphone? Uh... Something the 66 tube mic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Where did all that stuff go? Did I give it to you? No, you sold the computer to one of your friends, a studio computer. And then you had them. I think you sold it all. The Emu MP7 Hip Hop Command Station Multi-Track Sequencer yeah. Beat Machine with Sonar 8 Producer Edition. <laughs> we put a lot of time and energy into that. Dude, you were a great producer, man. It was fun. This guy was a phenomenal music producer. Like your ability to get in and learn shit and you... You're like, okay, because I was focused on it. It's like wherever your focus is, is, is where, you know, where your energy is, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you gotta focus. Dude, I remember you used to go on stage in front of like 500, even a thousand people and rap. Is that crazy? <laughs> Dude, I still, I get goosebumps. I got the footage on my old computer. Like he ran out on stage in front of <laughs> like you had energy drink you throw oh, yeah. you like boss in the street boss in the ground. <laughs> that was awesome doesn't it seem like that was a lifetime ago though it I mean, was a whole lifetime ago and yeah. i was the cameraman back then i was the one filming everything and shit. yeah it's just weird like i you see people from that time and i mean it was what uh i mean we went to vegas in 2008 that's when the album came out so i mean really it's, it's 10 11 years ago I mean, wow, like, <laughs> dude, you had what was and that it car? It seems like it was a lifetime. Do you ago. still have that car with the on the twenty two inch rims or whatever? No, with the <laughs> flat screen teeth. No, no, I don't have any of that stuff. What was? <laughs> no, I don't have any of that stuff. All right, cool, man. Thanks so much, brother. All right, dude. And then also, you can listen to this podcast on SoundCloud, on iTunes, on Anchor FM, on Stitcher Radio, anywhere, any of your favorite podcast apps. Yeah. You can also go to keithkelfus.com and look at the podcast tab, click it, and then all your favorite podcast apps are on there to listen to this or any of the previous or next episodes. So, thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, let us know in the comments below, and I'll put Eric's links below. And I'll see you on the next one. Later. Yeah.